try to have compassion for yourself. We all have our limits in terms of our patience, in terms of how much we can take care of all the people we need to take care of. So my hope is that you just notice where you are at your limits, where you're at your wits end, where you need to pause and put yourself in the pantry and just take some deep breaths. I have been there or the laundry room or the bathroom or the garage or whatever, whatever, whatever spot you can go to take some breaths. (laughs) This is your Kick-Ass Life podcast, episode number 326. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host, the girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, Ask Kickers. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I feel like it's important for me to tell you what the date is that I'm recording this as things are changing so quickly over here. It is Wednesday, March 18th. I am recording this at 3.45 Eastern time. And me and my family are just self-quarantining. Self-quarantining? Is that a word? Self-quarantining. I think that's a word. If not, it is now, but we are trying to stay home as much as possible. I think we have enough food. Uh, I think we have enough toilet paper. We also have a bidet, which I don't know if I've told you that. I don't know if there's ever been a reason for me to tell you that we have a bidet. (laughs) My husband met someone at a party last year, probably about a year ago, and This guy had just installed a bidet and he was like an evangelist for them apparently and my husband got to talking to him and then the next day my husband was on Amazon shopping for bidets. I was like, what? And I was not sold at first and then he installed it and now, you know, I'm like, I I dig this. You do use a lot less toilet paper. So All I'm saying is that if you did not get to the store in time to get your TP, A, you can always use a warm washcloth, uh, or B, you could order a bidet. And it was not, it was like $35. (laughs) Maybe I'll put a link to it in the show notes. I will. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. I had no intention of talking about bidets on this podcast. But hopefully you had a good chuckle because we could all use one. This is sort of a part two to the podcast that I released a few days ago, How to Cope in Uncertain Times. And I have a few more things to talk to you about that will hopefully help you during these very uncertain times. Uh, Last, what was even a week ago? (laughs) Last, a few days ago, I talked to you about setting limits for yourself in terms of media and news and things like that. I really love following a woman named Jessica Yellen. I will put her link in the show notes. She's a journalist who, uh, her whole thing is like news without noise. She remains unbiased and it's really just true journalism, telling us what's going on. I really, really like her. I heard her on a podcast uh, last year and have been following her ever since then. So I will link to her in the show notes. But for me, I watch whatever videos she has posted. I read the headlines first thing in the morning. And then during the day, try to stay off as much as possible until the evening. It's very tempting to go on and see what's going on. Even if you are scrolling through Facebook, especially, there are a lot of different things out there. So just know your limits. Uh, Know if any of your neighbors need help. There are things happening in the community, delivery systems for people in need or kids that rely on school lunches that aren't able to have them anymore. So check in, see what you can do for your community. That's it. You know, it's, it's part of actually the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Step 12 is all about being of service. And part of the purpose of that, the intention is so that we can help other alcoholics. And also when you are helping people with their problems, it's a whole lot easier to put your own problems aside. And That is true for what's going on right now. That's what I have asked myself over the last, over the last week in the beginning of the week when I started, started to kind of like come up for air. 
at least <laughs> momentarily, I asked myself, okay, how can I be of service? So I'm contacting all my former clients and seeing if they need to hop on the phone, just seeing how they are. I am reaching out to friends that I know in my community, other moms that I'm friends with that I'm not seeing anymore like I used to, just seeing how they are, just checking in, even if I'm pretty sure they're probably okay, checking in on them anyway. I also talked about mental illness. If you are someone who struggles with anxiety and depression, I should say, and or depression, this isolation uh, might be really exacerbating your struggle. So what do you need to do to take care of yourself? If you know someone who struggles with mental illness, please keep checking in on them. And if you are the strong one, please take care of yourself. So today I want to talk to you about, you know, these are these might be things that you have already heard that people are talking about on social media. And this is just a quick list that I came up with. And these are things that help me personally tremendously. One of those things is to move your body. I know, I know, as we work from home, as we might be tremendously nervous, you might be in a service profession where if you don't work, you don't make money. And Sometimes sitting at home, it, it can feel better. We want we want that relief in an instant, right? We want to change the way that we feel. And sometimes it's easier to sit on the couch and veg out and eat junk food and drink lots of booze and text your ex or whatever it is that you do to get that quick relief. But in the long term, this is not helping you. Those kinds of coping skills are actually biting you in the ass. Move your body. I know you might not feel like it. You can use, I think I saw, I, I'm gonna need to go check, but I'm almost positive that I saw that Beach Body. I am of no affiliation of them. I, I do have several of their products from years ago, but they're doing a 90 days totally free on their, I think it's their on-demand workouts, Peloton, which I'm a huge fan of. I have a bike. I've had one for over a year and have 300 rides. I have to congratulate myself a little bit on that. Amazing. Uh, they have, they are so much more than a stationary bike. They have tons of yoga classes and meditations and boot camps, treadmill rides. If you happen to have a treadmill at your house or a stationary bike, then you're in luck. But they have so, there's so much more than treadmill and stationary bikes. I do believe that they are free for 90 days on their app. So I will link to both of those in the show notes. And you guys know YouTube is just a plethora of so many workouts. I know a lot of studios are doing uh, free uh, Yoga studios, they're just streaming from their yoga studio. Amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Again, you may not be able to think about anything else other than current events, but taking even 20 to 30 minutes to exercise can be the medicine you need for your mental and emotional help. I know it has been tremendously helpful for me. The next thing I want to talk to you about is... Having some kind of symbol that when you see it, it makes you pause and do a quick little deep breath. Maybe in that moment you practice gratitude. Maybe in that moment you list five things that you love more than anything. And this might be a little bit tricky because obviously you're not leaving your house and it's a whole lot easier if you were driving around <laughs> somewhere else where you might see your thing. My symbol that I use for this, that I've used for a while now, is the cardinal, the bird. Whether I see it, you know, printed somewhere or the real cardinals where I used to live, I don't think I ever saw a cardinal, but here in North Carolina, they are fairly common. Not as common as like pigeons in San Francisco or anything like that or seagulls in San Diego, but they are fairly common. And I'll tell you what, I see them all the time now that I have declared that they are my symbol. It happened when my dad died and it's a long story for another time. But now when I see a cardinal outside my windows, any window of my house, and now that it's spring, there are more of them, I pause and I use that as a guide that tells me everything's going to end up okay. 
everything's going to be all right. It's going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug-and-play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point-of-sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. I have definitely been in that place where my paycheck ran out before the next one got here. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. You can use Earnin to pay for a girl's night out, a last minute gift for a loved one, or even summer camp for the kids. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R. N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in noise under podcast when you sign up. It really, really helps the show. Noise under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Maybe your symbol is when the time is 1111. Maybe your symbol is a squirrel with an acorn, (laughs) with a nut trying to move your butt. Um, Whatever it is, just pick one, something to sort of ground you, which is a great segue for the next thing I'm going to talk to you about. And that is prayer and meditation. And if you know me, you know that this really isn't something that I talk about all the time. It's not something that I'm telling you all to do. I'm, I'm not sending out meditations in, in my digital programs or in any of my group programs very rarely. I might do a visualization now and then, but it's, it's typically not my area of expertise or my specialty. But I'll tell you what, in times like this, 100%, this is something that I lean on in my own personal practice. My work is a little bit cerebral. Uh, If you read either of my books, you know that it's like, you know, tips and tools and strategies and things like that for the doing. It's a little bit less on the being. And I have a lot of really amazing colleagues that focus on the being. Mine is more so behavioral and the doing. Again, however... What I've been doing lately is meditating more. And by more, I mean almost every day. (laughs) Every other day. Um, And praying. And I know that the term prayer can be triggering for those people who um, are atheists or agnostic or maybe grew up in a Christian home and have, have gone through a spiritual transition, whatever that might look like. But here's how I have sort of shifted my focus. For me, prayer is talking with the universe, with God, with your higher power, whatever, however you understand it. And meditation is listening. If you heard Jessica Clark Graham on the podcast, I don't know, about a month or two ago, she's someone that I worked with for many, many months in 2019, and she was heavily pushing me into I shouldn't say that. She was encouraging me and helping me (laughs) in meditation. And every time I have a teacher or a mentor who 
helps me through that. It absolutely 100% helps. So I am here to tell you that in times like this, you might have a little bit of extra time on your hands. I encourage you to focus on both prayer and meditation. Because again, prayer is talking and meditation is listening. One more thing about prayer, and it's funny when I look back on how I used to pray, it was very different back then. And I used to pray for specific things and pray for specific relationships to work out. And I would pray for other people too. But now my prayers are mostly open-ended, which is very different for me. You know, I'm used to specific and, and, you know, wanting to control situations, but I ask the universe, allow me to pay attention and listen to whatever it is that I am here to do. Allow me to have the strength and courage and patience to step into my greatest gifts, to step into my greatest strengths, to do whatever it is I need to do to be the best Andrea on this earth in this time and space. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much my prayer. I think sometimes my friend Courtney says, a lot of times the only times that we pray is when we jump out of the airplane and our parachute won't open. Like in those holy shit moments, which is right now, right? And that's okay. That's okay if you uh, are not much of a prayer or you are someone who only prays when you jump out of a plane and your parachute won't open. That's okay. And sometimes when we get back into it, we're like, I don't know what to say. So hopefully what I have shared with you is helpful. And lastly, I know that at the end of all of this, I do think it's a little bit premature to talk about this now. But when this is all over, I am a true believer that we are going to look back and learned a lot about ourselves and about how we cope and about uh, what our triggers are and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Months and months from now. Don't worry about that now. But I think along the way, as the days go by, as the hours go by, my hope is that you, as you're noticing things about yourself, let me give you some examples. So if you are home with your children and you are discovering how difficult it can be to try to work from home, I used to tell, because I've been do, I've been doing that for a long time, I used to tell my husband, imagine if I took our kids to your work and you had to figure out <laughs> what to do with them and to take care of them and keep them entertained and do your job. And you're probably, you know, all of you are probably figuring out that that it's um, complicated. And uh, some of you also might be figuring out this whole homeschool thing. We're going to do online learning and figuring out that you're not cut out to be a teacher. Personally, it took me years to get over the shame and guilt of admitting that I did not enjoy the job of being a stay-at-home mom. I loved my children. I love them so much. I'm I've always wanted to be a mom. I am grateful that I am a mom, that I got to be a mom. And at the same time, it was the job of being a stay-at-home mother that I didn't love. And again, didn't say anything, didn't mean anything about my children, but I think that some of us might be in that place. When you when you find yourself in those moments of irritation, of frustration, of fear, you know, last a few days ago I was I was saying, watch yourself if you're working your pain out on other people. Sometimes we work out our fear and our pain and our anxiousness out on our children. We get passive aggressive, we get biting, we get sarcastic, we get mean, we lash out. In other words, we are not our best selves. As that happens, if it does, just notice and apologize and clean up any messes that you need to and just notice. Watch yourself where you're beating yourself up for being a quote unquote terrible mom, for losing your patience. The kids are going to be so traumatized. They're going to be traumatized as it is. And now I've been such an asshole to them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you're going down that path, 
Do your best to have compassion for yourself. We're all in this together. You might have some friends on social media that are posting lovely moments of, I've already seen them, lovely moments between mom and kid sitting at the table, laughing and learning and doing crafts. That's fantastic. I'm so happy for them. And I also know that for as many moments as <laughs> there are that, there are other moments that are not as beautiful. Okay, we're human and try to have compassion for yourself. We all have our limits in terms of our patience, in terms of how much we can take care of take care of all the people we need to take care of. So, my hope is that you just notice where you are at your limits, where you're at your wits end, where you need to pause and put yourself in the pantry and just take some deep breaths. I have been there or the laundry room or the bathroom or the garage or whatever, whatever, whatever spot you can go to take some breaths. Know that collectively there are lots of other moms and caretakers. Even if you, if you don't have children, you're taking care of somebody. I know some of you have like three or more dogs. That's a lot. That's a lot to be responsible for. So Ask Kickers, that's all I got for you today. I love you. I adore you. I'm thinking of you. We are built for times like this. We are resilient. Please take care of yourself and each other. And until next time, I will see you out in cyberspace. Bye-bye. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts.